in Mexico. We started out in Montana. We wanted to go somewhere kind of off the grid, rural, to go fishing. Kind of like the stuff we do in Montana. Dirt roads, no cell phone service. Those are two of just the classic things I think of when I think of a good fishing spot. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Let's start at the beginning when I first met you. How did how did a dude is 29 and a dude is 60 become killer friends? <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. I mean, let's start with that. I mean, that's kind of weird to begin with, right? But it just goes to show you what how fly fishing binds all people, no matter race, color, creed, or age. All that is irrelevant. If you have the defective gene and you are a fly fishing, a fly fisherman, everything is irrelevant. You can, everybody is in the same club. And it doesn't matter who, what, where you are, it's, you're all cool. Now let's talk about Mexico and we're talking, let's talk about how cool it is awesome. to kind of roll the back door, man. I mean, I've traveled all over the world and I've always rolled the back door. The back door's cheaper. The back door is cheaper. The back door is cheaper and you meet real people. We got Leo, the mover and shake. What do you say, he was 10 years old, 12, something like that. It's like a drug deal. It's like, you need gas? I got you covered, man. I got you covered. I got you, I got you gas. I got you, you just chill. You just chill right here. Man. Just you just up. chill right here. Dude, he takes off on his bike. I mean, sure, don't forget the coolest thing about Leo was that he fly fishes. Dude, obviously that was not the first time that kid touched a fly rod. I thought, I thought, it would, you know, when he told me, oh, I've got two permit on a fly rod, I was like, bullshit, kid. I put that fly rod in his hand, and after I did that, I, I was like, I believed, I was like, you know what, kid, you might not have been lying. <laughs> okay. Gracias. Gracias, amigo. Yo quiero pescar con usted. Gracias. Yeah. I fish a lot in the ocean. I fish a lot for tarpon in the Keys. I got a bunch of buddies or guides in the Keys. And, tar and permit were always one of those things that was like, yeah, right, go ahead, you can throw a fly at, but you're never gonna get one. Every permit I've ever really thrown at, the minute I made a back cast, they just haul ass and run away. So it's like, how the hell are you supposed to catch these things, right? You can't even like throw the fly at them, they run away. The other species that are here have been badass to catch and keep keeping us busy for sure. Evening bonefish, bonefish on the beach, incredible experiences. <laughs> you can't really knock bonefish. Giovanni really wanted to catch a permit with us. He was fired up. He was like, we got this. We've been fishing hard all day. We saw a permit all day and just couldn't make it happen. And then 
midday slump. Afternoon, had a couple more shots. See how far he moved for it? Yeah, he was on there for a second. He just kept swimming at us, dude. I mean, yeah, I'm still shaking. <laughs> Giovanni had this spot in his back pocket for the end of the day. Probably knew the tides coming out. We but we thought we were done with the day. It was late, and he comes out, makes a hard turn the other direction. And we're like, oh sweet, one more flat. And he was like, yeah, there's sometimes there's tailing fish here. We pull over, start looking around, and there's tailing fish over there. And he's like, all right, we gotta go wait them. So we throw on the boots, get out. They disappear, classic permit. And then all of a sudden we're, we were about, to, honestly, we were about, probably about to walk back over the boat. We're looking around, he's like, right here, right here. And I just cast freaking, honestly, not the greatest cast, <laughs> but <laughs> landed in front of a couple of them. There's like probably 10 permit. All of a sudden, one of them sped up and just crushed it. We were both just like, yeah, dude. Giovanni was like, F yeah! We <laughs> gave a pound it, bam, game on. <laughs> I was a little worried about losing it, yeah. but honestly, the hook set was, you could, you could tell. You were like, oh, it's game oh. over, yeah. <laughs> And I was like, dude, fourth quarter, fourth end quarter. of the day. What does what does DYI stand for? Do it yourself. Do it yourself. You know that's one of the coolest things ever about trout fishing is sitting alone on a river with no other interferences, no other little voices telling you what to do. No, you should do this, you should do that. All that quiet when you're fishing in trout river. That's one of the best things about fishing is all the voices are quieted, right? It's only you and the trout. And you can't get that in a guide boat. And it's amazing, you're out there prospecting for gold. It's just a great moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, even if you don't catch a fish. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, you're a better person. You're a better person when you come away. Which is what's so cool about whatever kind of fishing you do.
take one. Puffer by the air. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Dude, tiptoes. Wow. They're better than the ballerinas of New York. Yeah. 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 Ye